live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE, covering Cisco Live 2018. Brought to you by Cisco, NetApp, and theCUBE's ecosystem partners. Hey, welcome back everyone. This is theCUBE's coverage here in Orlando, Florida at Cisco Live 2018. Our first year here at Cisco Live, we were in Barcelona this past year. Again, Cisco transforming to a next generation set of networking capabilities while maintaining all the existing networks and all the security. I'm John Furrier, your host, with Stu Miniman, my co-host, for the next three days. Our next guest is Arun Garg. Welcome to theCUBE. You are the Director of Product Management for Converge Infrastructure Group at NetApp. Correct, thank you very much for having me on your show and it's a pleasure to meet with you. One of the things that we've been covering a lot lately is the NetApp's um, um, really rise in the cloud. I mean, NetApp's been doing a lot of work on the cloud. I mean, I've wrote stories back when Tom, uh, Tom Georges was the CEO, when Amazon just came on the scene. NetApp has been really into the cloud and from the customer standpoint, but now with storage and elastic resources and serverless, the, the customers are now starting to be mindful. Absolutely. Of how to maximize the scale and with all flash, kind of a perfect storm. What, what are you guys up to? What's your core thing that you guys are talking about here at Cisco Live? So absolutely, thank you. So George Kurian, our CEO uh, at NetApp, is very much in uh, taking us to the next generation and the cloud. Within that, I take care of some of the expansion plans we have on FlexPod with Cisco. And in that, we've got two new things that we are uh, announcing right now. One is the FlexPod for healthcare, which is in FlexPod, we've been doing horizontal applications so far, which are like the databases, tier one database, as well as applications from Microsoft and virtual desktops. Now we are going vertical. Within the vertical, our application, the first one we are looking in the vertical is healthcare. And so it's FlexPod for healthcare. And that's the first uh, uh, piece that we are addressing. What's the big thing with update on FlexPod? Obviously FlexPod has been very successful. What's the modernization aspect of it? Because Cisco's CEO was on stage today talking about Cisco's value proposition about the old way is now transitioning to a new network architecture yeah. in the modern era. What's the update on FlexPod? Take a minute to explain what are the cool new things going on with FlexPod. Correct. So, the all flash fast, which is the underlying technology which is driving the flex part, has really picked up over the last year. As customers keep wanting to improve the infrastructure with better latencies and better performance, the all flash fast has uh, driven even the flex part into the next uh, generation. So that's the place where we are seeing double digit growth over the last five quarters consistently in flex part. So that's a very important development for us. Uh, we've also uh, done more of the uh, standard CVDs that we do on SAP and a few other uh, are coming out. So those are all out there. Now we are going to make sure that all these assets can be consumed by the vertical industry in healthcare. And there's another solution we'll talk about the managed private cloud on FlexPod. Yeah, Arun, I'd, I'd love to talk about the private cloud. So yeah, I, I think back to when, when Cisco launched UCS, yes. it was the storage partners that really yes. helped drive that uh, modernization for virtualization. NetApp with FlexPod, very successful over the years doing that. As we know, virtualization isn't enough to really be a private cloud. All the things that Chuck Robbins was talking about right. on stage, how do I modernize, how do I get uh, you know, automation in there. So help us connect the dots as to how we got from you know, a good virtualized platform to this, as I think you said, managed private cloud, FlexPod, and Cisco. Absolutely. So everybody likes to consume a cloud. It's easy to consume a cloud. You go and you click on, I need a VM, small, medium, large, and I just want to see a dashboard with how my VMs are doing. But in reality, it's more difficult to just build your own cloud. There's complexity associated with it. You need a service platform where you can give a ticket, then you need an orchestration platform where you can set up the infrastructure, then you need a, a monitoring platform which will show you all of the ways your uh, uh, infrastructure is working, you need a capacity planning tool, there's tens of tools that need to be integrated. So what we have done is we have partnered with some of the premium partners and some GSIs who have already built this. So the risk of a customer using their private cloud infrastructure is minimized. And therefore, uh, these uh, partners also have a managed service. So when you combine the fact that you have a 
private cloud infrastructure in the software domain, as well as the managed service, and you put it on the on-prem flex pod that are already sold, then the customer benefits from having the best of both worlds, a cloud-like experience on their own premise. And that is what we are delivering with this FlexPod managed private cloud solution. Talk about the relationship with Cisco. So we're here at Cisco Live. You guys have a good relationship with yeah. Cisco. What should customers understand about the relationship? What are the top bullet points uh, and value opportunities and what does it mean to the impact for the customer? So we all these solutions, we work very closely with the Cisco business unit and we jointly develop these solutions. So within that, what we do is, there's the BU to BU interaction where the solution is developed and defined. There is a marketing to marketing interaction where the collateral gets created and reviewed by both parties. So you will not put a FlexPod brand unless the two companies have agreed. So it's tightly then integrated. It's tightly integrated. The sales uh, teams are aligned. The marketing, the uh, communications team, the channel partner team, that's the whole value that the end customer gets because when a partner goes to a high-end enterprise customer, he knows that both Cisco and NetApp teams can be brought to the table for the customer to showcase the value as well as help them through it. Yeah, over in one of the other areas that have been talking about the show is if you talk about modernization, you talk about things like microservices, containers are yes. uh, pretty important. Uh, how does that story of containerization fit into, into FlexPod? Absolutely, so containerization helps you get workloads, the cloud native workloads are the type two native. Uh, type two workloads as Gartner calls them. So our mode two. What we do is we work with the Cisco teams and we already had a CVD design with a hybrid cloud with the Cisco um, uh, Cloud Center platform which is the clicker acquisition and we showed a design with that. What we are now bringing to the table is the ability for our cu uh, customers to benefit with a managed service on top of it. So that's the piece we're doing with the cloud teams. Uh, with the Cisco team, the ACI fabric is very important to them. So that ACI fabric is visible and shown in our designs, whether you do SAP, you do Oracle, you do VDI, and you do basic infrastructure, or you do the managed private cloud or flex part on healthcare. All of these have the core networking technologies from Cisco, as well as the cloud technologies from Cisco in a form factor or in a manner that easily consumable by our customers. Arun, talk about the customer use cases. So like, let's say you've got a customer, obviously you guys have a lot of customers together with Cisco, and they're doing some uh, complex things uh, with the technology. But for the customer out there that has yet, not yet kind of went down the NetApp Cisco route, what do they do? Because a lot of storage guys are looking at all flash, so check, you guys have yeah. that. They want great performance. Check, but then they got to integrate it. So what do you say to the folks watching that aren't yet customers about what they should look at and evaluate vis-a-vis -vis your opportunity with them and say the competition? So yes, there are customers who are doing all this as uh, separate silos, but the advantage of taking a converged infrastructure approach is that you benefit from the years of man experience or uh, person experience that we have put behind in our labs to architect this, make sure that everything is working correctly, and therefore it reduces your deployment time and reduces the risk. And if you want to be agile and faster, even in the traditional infrastructure, while you're being asked to go to the cloud, you can do it with our FlexPod design guides. If you want the cloud-like experience, then you can do it with a managed private cloud uh, solution on your premise. So they got options and they got flexibility on migrating to the cloud or architecting that. Yes. Okay, yes. great. I've got to ask you another question that comes up a lot on theCUBE and certainly we see it in the industry. One of the trends is verticalization. Yes. So verticalization is not a new thing. Vertical industry, people go to market that way, they build products that are custom to verticals. But with cloud, one of the benefits of cloud and kind of a cloud operations is you have a horizontally scalable capability. So how do you guys look at that? Because these verticals, they got to get closer to the front lines and have apps that are customized. I mean, data that's fastly delivered to the app. How should verticals think about architecting storage to maintain the scale of horizontally scalable, but yet provide customization into the applications that might be unique to the vertical? 
Okay, so let me give a trend first and then I'll get to the uh, specific. So in the vertical industry, uh, the next trend is industry clouds. For example, you have healthcare clouds and you'll have clouds to specific industries. And the reason is because these industries have to keep the data on-prem. So the data gravity plays a lot of uh, impact in all of these decisions and the security of the data. So that is getting into industry specific clouds. The second piece is uh, analytics. So customers now are finding that data is valuable and the insights you can get from the data are actually more valuable. So what they want is the data on their premise, they want the ability or in their control, so to say, they want the ability to not only run their production applications, but also the ability to run analytics on top of that. In the specific example for healthcare, what it does is when you have all flash fast, it a, provides you a faster response for the patient because the physician is able to get the diagnostics done better if he has some kind of analytics helping him. Yeah. Plus, the first piece I talked about, the rapid deployment, yeah. is very important because you want to get your infrastructure set up. So I can give an example on that too. Well, the, before we get to the example, this is an important point because I think this is really the big mega trend. It's not really kind of talked much about, but it's pretty happening, is that what you just pointed out was, it's not just about speeds and feeds and IOPS. The performance criteria to the industry cloud has, has other new things like data, the role of data, what they're using for the application. Correct. So it's just, you got to have table stakes of great fast storage. Yes. But it's got to be integrated into what is becoming a use case for the right. verticals. Did I get that right? Yes, absolutely. So I'll give two examples. One, I can name the customer. So they are come uh, at our booth tomorrow uh, in a mini theater. So LCMC Health, part of UMC, Med and they have the UMC Medical Center in. So when New Orleans had this uh, Katrina disaster in Louisiana. So they came up with, they need a hospital, fast. And they decided on FlexPod, because within three months, with the wire ones architecture and replication, they could scale their whole IT data center for healthcare. So that has helped them tremendously to get it up and running. Second is with the all flash fast, they're able to provide faster response to their customer. So that's a typical example that we see in, in these uh, kind of industries. Arun, thanks for coming on theCUBE. I really appreciate it. You guys are doing a great job in following NetApp's recent success lately. As always, NetApp's always going the next level. Quick question for you to end the segment. What's, what's your take of Cisco Live this year? What's, the, what's some of the vibe of the show? So I know it's day one, there's a lot more to come and you're just getting a sense of it. What's the vibe? What's coming out of the show this year? What's the big aha? Uh -huh? So I attended the keynote today, uh, and it was very interesting because Cisco has taken networking to the next level with intent-based networking. It's data and analytics where you can put on a subscription mode on all the pieces of the infrastructure networking. And that's exactly the same thing which NetApp is doing, where we are going up in the cloud with this subscription base. And when you add the two subscription base, then for us, at least in the managed private cloud solution, we can provide the subscription base to the managed private cloud through a managed service provider. So knowing where the industry was going, knowing where Cisco was going, and knowing where we want to go, we had come up with this solution which matches both the strengths of Cisco as well as NetApp. And the number of connected devices going up every day, yes. more network connections, more geo domains. It's complicated. It is complicated, <laughs> but if you do it correctly, we can help you right. find a way through it. Arun, thank you for coming on theCUBE. I'm John Furrier here on theCUBE with Stu Miniman, here with NetApp at Cisco Live 2018, back with more live coverage after this short break.